fancy intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're doing another officer video because that's everybody's favorite thing, right? Because it's the most important thing in Star Trek Fleet Command. And today we're taking a look at who is, in my opinion, the most important officer in the game for Armada. The best Armada officer that you have. And that is 6 of 10. Now, you can locate 6 of 10, of course, in your transporter pattern store. If you don't have him already, you can grind for him. In fact, I have a tier one one. Now, obviously recommend you getting higher than that, but the more you get transporter patterns, the easier it is to go after him. And then of course you can work on getting him in other more nefarious ways. But let's talk about how he works and why he is the best. First thing I'm gonna do is give you a visual representation using some logs. And then we're gonna get into some nasty math. I know, we hate math. Why math? This is why you go to school in high school, everybody, so that as kids you can grow up to become adults who can do video game math. Wow! Yeah! Yeah! Something tells me you're not as excited about that as I am. But don't worry, it's that level of entertainment that keeps you watching. <laughs> Also, you should check out hanging out with Ultimate DJ and myself on Twitch. Oh my gosh, that was fun. If you missed that, well, join the Discord. You can get some good chuckles. So anyway, here's my 6 of 10 in my list of all the Borgs I have except for 2 of 10. And you see I've got them at Tier 1. And the main ability that we're looking at here is called Defenses Are Irrelevant. Now, of course, we will have our good friends over at Cars and their Discord to pull up the information right over there to show you that the ability grows and what it becomes. At level one, at 5%, though, it can still be useful, even at a very paltry 5%. Now, how do I know it can be useful? Because you're about to see a log of it being useful on the following ship. A tier eight Burrell, currently only running 8,000 attack, very low number in attack. But I did that intentionally to show a number that anybody could realistically get to. In terms of if you're level 28, you know, and you've got a high level ship, you can start getting to some of these numbers. And this is with a tier one, six to 10. And you, the goal obviously would be get him higher and higher and higher. So let's take a look at the logs and then we're going to break down into some math about, let's, we're going to use an enterprise as an example with a lower tier. So we have these two logs. Now this is the first one. And I soloed this. Now, the first thing that I'm sure you're going to want to look at is how many rounds it went. So solo, a tier one, six of 10 made it 20 rounds and we won, obviously. Now the second one I want to show is Kirk Spock Khan because this is like a go-to that everybody likes to use. Well, here is a secondary. Now Kirk Spock Khan actually goes less rounds, but let me tell you why six of 10 is better even though you're looking at these logs. Generally, when you're running these, you're going to run more. One, you're probably going to load out more stats for six to 10. I purposely kept it low to show how these things work. But second of all, you got to remember that if you're running in a group, Khan only activates every time the ship gets hit. So if you're running in a group, this is actually not activating that often. And what we want to do is look at the numbers. So if we pull up the battle log, you'll see round one, both logs are going to do the same amount. Because remember that the six of 10 ability works every time the weapons fires, it's going to grow and it grows cumulatively. But we'll talk about why it's so great in just a second. So if you do the math on this number for the Burrell, what you're gonna find is that the uh, mitigation percentage right here when you're attacking is 46.1%. And it's the exact same if you're with six of 10. So both of those rounds are identical. Now let's go down to round 10, because this is where you get kind of juicy. And this is where the goodness comes in that we're looking for. So come on down to round 10. And I'm, I'm only showing these so that you can do the math behind me and not think that I'm lying to you. So here's a critical. So obviously con's working, but the mitigation isn't affected by con. So we're doing the mitigation here and you're looking at 46.1%, exact as it was before. That didn't change at all. So with con, our mitigation stays the same, which is what we'd expect because there's no mitigation officer with Coach Spot Con. So let's back out now and then hover over to our six of 10. Now remember, six of 10 is not relying on you getting hit. However, it does it anytime you're attacking on Armada. Anytime, every time a weapon fires. Now remember a double weapon shot, say a D3 counts as one. But anytime an individual weapons fires, he's going to then add to the piercing values of your ship. He's adding, he's changing the base number. That's what makes him so good. So remember round one right here, you can do the math right here, but it is 41 or 46.1%. Now let's go down to round 10. Halfway through the fight, 
Round 10 with only 8,000 attack, we get right here. See this one? 160,000 is the damage. There's the mitigation. It dropped down to 22.5%. So the enemy was only stopping 22%. We've literally cut the mitigation number down by more than half. It was at 46, drops all the way down to 22, and that's only round 10. It gets even lower as we go on. So let's talk about how the math of this officer works. What makes this so incredibly strong? And this is me running the Kirk Spot crew, which there's way better crews I can actually run here. So let's talk about the math. Now, our good friend Hugo and uh, Erica Lou have helped us with some of this as they've provided some of their examples as I've got some here. But this way, I can just give you a rough, here's how it works and here's why it works. So we're going to start, imagine if you will, so here's my enterprise. We're going to take this in as if this was a tier four enterprise. So there's the enterprise in the background and we're just going to run math above your head because, well, not above your head, just in the it's right there, okay? Just listen, wait for the math. We'll put it up on the screen. In fact, we're just going to use the calculations that Gregor and I used in our chats as we went through this process. So, Tier 4 Enterprise. Now, using LCARs, you can find the base piercing numbers for each weapon type in the actual uh, weapons menu. So, you actually would go to the upgrade, you'd pick the weapon, and then you would find the piercings right here. So, armor, shield, accuracy, etc. And we can kind of use those as a base point. What we're going to do now is we're back out here and then let's start throwing up some numbers. So if you were to have a tier four enterprise and then we'll have the weapons that they have here on the screen. So don't imagine tier nine because I know not everybody has that. But tier four is a very achievable uh, reach for an enterprise. So armor piercing is going to be 2,627. Shield piercing will be 3,003. And then accuracy will be 25,242 with the weapons of the enterprise. So we're going to use a crew of 20,000 attack just to make the math semi easy. 20,000 is achievable even for me. You know, and at tier four, that might be pushing in a little bit. You'll need some max officers, but for the math, we're just going to make it easy and do 20,000. We could also do 10, but we're going to do 20 here, and you can run your own math. Now, we're also going to say that six of 10 is rank four, so better than mine. Rank four, six of 10. That's a 30% bonus from attack values. And this is, as we say, repeating, it's an accumulative effect. So 30% of 20,000 is going to be 6,000 because math and we like math math is fun love math so now here's what we're going to do we're going to take that 6,000 and we're going to add it to the actual base number of the weapons and this is where we know that 6 to 10 becomes better than almost everything else in the game because generally like researches and stuff like that we're simply using that and adding it together and then working on top of the base this is actually changing the base value so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the armor piercing. It was 2627. Now we're going to add 6,000 points to that. It becomes 8.627. And then we're going to multiply our results with all of our bonuses. So now instead of it being 2.627 times, you know, your research, which in this case would be uh, 355. And we'll show what those are based on some of the other, you know, uh, numbers that we have. But you're also going to then increase your 9,000 with the shield piercing, he actually all increases. And you'll notice the very next shot, you're increasing it again. So now it's 8,627 plus 6,000. So that's going to happen every time you fire. And even though armadas, especially the high level ones, get ridiculously high defense numbers, you're going to start eclipsing those very, very quickly because this is a cumulative effect. And if you're using it on a ship that has more shots, I mean, if you're using it on something that only does shoots once in a round, you won't have the effect as much. So for the D3, it's not going to be as noticeable. But use it on a ship that fires two, three times in a round with individual weapons. You're going to see this increase very, very quickly to the point where you're getting rid of a lot of that mitigation very, very early on. And like I said, one of the biggest benefits is this does not have anything to do with you getting hit or not, which is the whole thing of Khan and some of the other officers is built around you getting hit. You don't have to worry about that here. So you're getting a cumulative add every time to the piercing stats, and that's going to then increase the amount that you're dealing in terms of damage to the opponent's hull. And of course, we'll throw up all these different numbers here in the background for you to go through yourself and the different research. But here's a log from Gregor and what he did in his Centurion with five, six, and then uh, running a you know, a, a third Borg officer, which I think he could have put anything else there if he wanted to, but just for the sake of the fight, you are going to get max synergy on yourself. So his ship is going to stop 71.2% of the incoming damage. And then first shot, 
51.1% mitigation. And then the next shot, 29.17. Round five was 16.9. And by round 28 was down to 15.4. Almost as low as we've ever seen. That's extremely low. So taking the mitigation down to 15% in a 28 round solo fight. That is a ridiculously good number. That is what makes this card so unbelievably powerful. And why it's so important for me, because you look at an officer like Khan, I mean, and this is not to not Khan. I love him as a card. It's a very good PVP card. But you get into the high level play, and we're talking about uh, you eventually get up to level 50. Khan's kind of a non-starter. He's not a primary card for you just because that small bonus is not as good as, say, a mitigation card. I mean, Marcus Sharvenik and Kang are more valuable individually in PvP than Khan is. That said, that doesn't mean Khan has no value. He's actually still one of the most important cards to get. But 6 of 10, when it comes to Armadas, is probably the most strong individual card in the entire game, and that's with some of the new Armada cards coming out. You look at, say, Jordy LaForge that's just come out where he does a damage boost versus those Klingon Armadas. But that's not as good as changing mitigation from 50% down to 15. That is a game changer, and that is exactly why 6 of 10 is so good and why he is so important to focus on leveling up. Now, at the beginning of this video, you saw a 5% 5 of 10 showing a big change, and that's a tier 1. Now, if you get him up to tier three, tier four, even max, remember, it is going to get harder to get up there with the independent credits and the Borg, you know, nanoprobes that you need. But even at tier one, you can notice a difference in your mitigation, depending on what you're fighting and how you load out attack underneath. I purposely went very light in loading out my attack on the Burrell. That was to keep it into a manageable, you know, everyday type of player. And then using a tier four enterprise as an example. Even a lower tier player getting these cards can find them useful in Armadas and it'd be more useful than a Kirk Spock Con run, which so many people still run because it's the generic run. Kirk Spock 6 needs to be your generic run. And there's still much better things that you can do. But change your gameplay, make your gameplay better, and you'll have more fun doing it. If you enjoyed the video and the math, smash the like button, share it out with everybody in your alliance, every server, every Facebook, every Reddit, and everywhere. We love y'all. Live long and prosper. Stay safe out there, Space Cowboys. And on Memorial Day, remember, use it an actual Memorial Day. Remember those who gave all. We appreciate everybody who has served in whatever country and whatever facility you've done so in. Y'all are awesome. We'll catch you in the next video. Deuces, that's me. I would like to request, request to Scopely to add more Klingons to the game. That is what I was told to do. And so I am doing it, which, you know, is not maybe the best thing as a leader to just do what you're told, but it seems like a good request to make to add more Klingons. Everything is better with Klingons. Am I right? I am right. Because I'm a Klingon. Klingon, mach, tach, judge. We are Klingons. Let it remain. All right. Laurel's on a roll today. She's very excited. An even better outro than the intro. Yeah. Woo!